Hello, Brother Sewing and Crafting family. Angela Wolf here, Brother Brand Ambassador. And of course, we have another fabulous show for you today. So did you have a nice weekend? I know some of you are not in the USA, but for us, we had a little vacation, a day off. Some of us had to work. But either way, the theme for today is going to fit right in. Embroidered towels for the beach. Well, kind of embroidery with a little bit more to it. But Heather has got a really cool project for you. So we are live streaming on Brother Sewing, uh, Sewing and Crafting. Facebook and YouTube page. I had to think if it's both YouTube and Facebook so we can see your comments. Say hi, say where you're from, and I will go get Heather. We'll be right back. Hello, Heather. How are you? Hi, Angela. Hello, everyone. I'm so excited to be here today. I'm so excited, too. Your project is so perfect for the summer season. Wonderful, except... Am I frozen? You are frozen. <laughs> Heather! <laughs> <laughs> we just, this moment, um, sat here talking and everything was fine. And now... Oh, okay. You can see me now and I'm not frozen, right? Here we go. Internet gremlins, everyone. Now you know we're live. So <laughs> That's Very right. Exciting. I'm so excited to be here. Hello, everyone. Hello, Angela. Did you have a great 4th of July? Oh, yes. And uh, the question to you, and everyone asks me, did you stay awake for the fireworks? No, I never do. In fact, I woke up <laughs> and heard the grand finale over the lake. And by then it was too late to even get up to see it. And I just rolled over and went back to sleep. How about you, Heather? Um, I'm, I'm in your camp, Angela. I hear them and I know they're going on, but I'm tired and I've seen a lot of fireworks show, although they're beautiful. And you know, every time you see them, you can't help but enjoy them. I know, you know, I told uh, my husband, I go, you know, I think they should reverse it. I'm a morning person. We should have fireworks pre-sunrise <laughs> for <be> everyone. <laughs> that would be perfect. I love that idea. <laughs> wake everyone up. Hey, wake everyone up. So I kind of gave a hint of what you're working on today, but it's a very cool project. I think so. I think this will be fun. I'm really excited to show you all my project and how it's working. All right, so you're gonna be working on a towel. Right, so I have a couple beach towels with me, um, totally different types, doesn't matter what you're working on. And um, I, I'm gonna show you two different ways that I applique on the beach towel and embroidered. And then I'm going to use my luminaire and I'm gonna use my scan and cut and I'm gonna pull some stuff out of the scan and cut and turn it into an applique and show you how I put it on. Awesome, I can't wait. So is there any special machines or any besides the scan and cut and a machine? What machines are you on today? So, okay, so I am on the Luminaire and uh, the Luminaire 2, so it has both upgrades. For the most part, you could do this with just a Luminaire 1. Uh, there's one little piece that I could show you, but um, what you do need, the absolute thing you need is my connection. And with my connection, you need to have the two newest Scan and Cut DX models. So the 325 or the 330D. And with those models, you will get automatically get my connection that you can hook up to your Luminaire and do these really cool things. I mean, basically my connection lets these machines talk to each other. Which is awesome. Now, if you don't have those machines, you're still going to want to watch because she gives a ton of tips for embroidery and things like that. But that's what yep. she's using. All right, Heather, why don't, do you have that to show us or do you want to just take it away? Yeah, I'm going to show you guys. So um, do you want me to hold it up or should I show you on the table? What, whatever you want. All right, let me show you what's on the table so we can start there. Um, just waiting for it to go. Okay, there it is. So let's start here. And I have a couple towels, like I said. And this one, they are both embroidered using this font. And I don't know if you guys know this, but this gigantic, beautiful font is in the Luminaire. And so I didn't have to buy anything or do anything special. Now, what I did do, and this is what we're talking about today, is here is an appliqued ice cream cone. And this um, ice cream cone is a design in the scan and cut. So what we're talking about with my connection is how you can use designs that are already in your machines and turn them into something like this digitized ice cream cone. Here, 
is another one. And I just love this beach towel. Just got it the other day. Um, and again, this is the exact same font I just showed you in the Luminaire, and I can show you where that is. I didn't have to do anything except resize to my mm -hmm. liking. And this is the applique ice cream cone that we are going to be doing today. So I'm really excited. I want to show you all of how this works. You could easily do either one. The reason I chose this one is it's two pieces. And I wanted you guys to see that you can do two colors of applique. You, aren't just, you don't just have to do one color that goes around the whole thing. We can split this up and we'll cut both the pieces on the scan and cut, and then we'll turn both of them into an applique. And that is what our goal for today is, is to take that applique and put it over here on the other side because I would like to have an applique um, ice cream cone on, cone on either side. So before we move over to the machine, let me give you an idea of how I'm gonna do that. This is just an eight by eight inch hoop for my Luminaire. Uh, this does not come with it, but you can use any Luminaire Brother compatible hoop. What I have put on this hoop is a sticky backed wash away stabilizer. So let me pull this out. So you can see it's crinkly and paper like. So on the back, on the back side, I'm actually using a wash away. Now, could you use a tear away? Absolutely, you could use tear away. I just kind of like this nice wash away that goes away when I'm done. And it does provide me with enough stability, as you can see here on the embroidery. So paper side up, I'm gonna go ahead and put this back into the hoop and then show you what I do next, just in case you have not worked with a sticky back before. I'm gonna place this back in here and just pop the hoop in. Of course, the hoop is really already almost positioned where I wanted it because I had tried earlier. All right, I got my flat paper here. I'm gonna use my very technical straight pin and I'm going to press and just enough to cut through the paper. You don't have to worry, it, it really won't cut unless you really dug in there. It's not gonna cut through your stabilizer, your wash away. I'm gonna peel back an edge and just like this, I'll be able to reveal all the sides of my sticky back. And the sticky back is just like it says, it is an adhesive stabilizer. Instead of, you know, a lot of times I'll see people you know, they might use like a 505, or sorry, an adhesive spray that might go on here, something they use in a can. But what's so wonderful is this is sticky. So now I'm able to just put my towel on here. Now, the one thing about embroidering a towel is they're large, right? I mean, this is a big towel I have here. But because with the Luminaire, I have a camera, I am able to put this pretty much anywhere I want. Notice that I am not... Um, putting it into my hoop. I'm doing a technique that you can, would call floating. So I'm taking my towel and I'm just going to, I know this is going to be the bottom of my um, embroidered, or excuse me, my uh, snow <laughs> ice cream cone. I know where I'm going with this. So I'm, <laughs> I got this somewhere. So notice I don't want, normally when I have a, a something like this, I put it in the middle, right? So I'd be kind of shooting for somewhere up here. And this, let me show you my hoop but I actually want this to be more down here because I'm gonna build my ice cream cone up like this. Again, we have the camera, so I'm not really worried about if this is in here straight or anything else. I have a projector, I have a camera, I have a snowman sticker. I mean, Brother gives you so many options for placement. One of the things that's great about doing this on most um, towels is they have some kind of a line. So I am using this line for my uh, ice cream cone. If it was a solid, I could still do the marking. But okay, that's good. I'm gonna leave that for right now. I'm gonna set it aside. And then we are gonna show you the next piece, which basically we are gonna go over to the scanning cut. And I'm going to show you how the magic of my connection works. That would be a luminaire. Here yes. we here's here's a scan. We can cut. see that great. I can see a lot of people making comments. Well, don't worry. Keep asking your questions. We'll take a break here shortly and uh, answer those. So keep rolling. Oh, this sure. is so fun. I love this. <clears throat> Thanks. Yeah, please. We will definitely answer these questions. All right. So we are at, you can see here, the 330D. As I mentioned, 
when I push the left arrow, it will go to my connection. Now you will not see this icon unless you have a 330D or a 325. So for people who are thinking, you know, I know there's a new scan and cut. Should I, should I upgrade? Is it worth it? This is a great test today for you to see that. So I'm going to press my connection and we're sending, we're going to take something out of the machine and we're going to send it over to the luminaire. I'm going to pick a pattern. Now I can use anything in here except licensed designs. So no Disney, no um, princesses, things like that. We can't use those. But I'm going to go into the general category and we're using the ice cream, which is in the food. And here are all the different foods. Now, all of these can be turned into applique. I, I just get so excited thinking about the, the opportunities that I have here. There are more than 1300 designs in this machine. And any of these designs could be turned into a fill stitch or an applique or a line design like red work. I mean, there's a lot of opportunity here with all of these designs. You could do it with these designs. So anyways, I could go on about those. Let's go back to our ice cream cone. Going to go ahead and press this category and I'm using this one. And this is the one on the first towel that I showed you. This is the ice cream cone that I created in applique. Nothing digitized here. This is a cut file, but we're being able to turn it into an applique or embroidered design. Here's the one that I want right here. And I actually made it a little bit bigger on my towel. You can make it as big as you want that fits on our cutting mat and would fit into our hoop. That's about as big as I made the one that I'm using. So I'll press OK. Now, just like the normal scan and cut functions, we have all of the pieces. I am going to bring the pieces over individually, and I will tell you why more in a minute. But here is the cone. Wonderful. Let's add the other design because I'm going to send them over at the same time. And here is the ice cream. And I'll press OK. So we're going to set those both on there. Now, my biggest tip here would be to leave yourself some room between the two. Don't, um, you know, don't arrange them so they're the way you're going to want them in the end or don't have them super close. Let's just make them enough apart so we can work with them individually. Now, if you're used to the scan and cut, this is new with my connection. You wouldn't have seen this before. And you're going to press transfer. Now, this is a wireless transfer. There's no USB involved. So I am connected to my Wi-Fi. And it's telling me I already have something else that I saved before. It's going to erase it. That's fine. It only holds one design at a time. All right, that's it. It's in the luminaire. We can go to the luminaire. And I mean, I got to tell you, this is the fastest thing ever. So we're done. Um, I'm just going to say, okay. And we're done with the luminaire. Or excuse me, we're done with the scan and cut. And we're going to head over to the luminaire. Anything, qu any questions there, Angela, or anything? Actually, just a quick one. And uh, this is a good one because Ar Arnell, I know you've always asked about the luminaire and the scan and cut. So a few people are asking about my connection. What what does it work with? Do you have to pay for it? Is it included? Could you give a little more details about that? Yeah, absolutely. Um, maybe let me, I'll come back really quick so you guys can see me. Those are great questions. So just to sort of recap, okay, is, is it free with a scan and cut? Uh, yes, in terms of if you get either of the new scan and cuts. So if you get the 325 or the 330D, and those are the models that you get with your from your brother dealer, and those are brother's current top of the line, one's a Disney, one's non-Disney, then it is included in the box. So there's no special fee and there's no special extra to get it. The only thing is, is you need a luminaire to use it. So this is something where you're going to want to pair them with together to get the benefits of it. Absolutely. And you know what? I know some of you have not that model, or maybe you have a scan and cut and don't have the luminaire. All you have to do is put a USB stick on the side, but it does not do everything she's showing where you take an embroidery design and take it to the scan and cut, just to be clear about that. 
Correct. Correct. Now, yes, and, that, and that's a great point, Angela. If you have a different scan and cut model, you can still save designs. Um, it still reads PES files. You can still read, um, take a PES file from your a different embroidery machine and open it up in the scan and cut. That did not go away. This is just sort of a new add on where we can do new things with all the designs in the two machines. Absolutely. And then Marilyn kind of asked the same thing. If you don't have my connection, can you use a thumb drive and how far will that go? Okay. So you could, you, you can still use a thumb drive. The scan and cut will recognize your embroidery designs, but you can't do this conversion that I'm about to show you. You do have to have those, these two specific machines. All right. Perfect. I think that clears it up. And also I put the link below. Well, you can see it. Uh, if you want to find your local brother dealer, you can always call them and ask too. So, all right, back to your luminaire. How's that? Sounds good. Thanks for the questions. Those are good ones. All right, I'm back at the luminaire. Now I purposely left this up. This was not an accident here. I'm not trying to give anything away, but what I want you to see is that I have converted our ice cream cone, the top piece into an applique. The bottom I converted into a stitch file and I have this bigger on the screen so that you can see it. I think, let me go. I think this will get a little too big, but I want to show you the details. So you can see here that this cone is actually fill stitch, just a regular embroidery design. And the top is empty because this is applique. So this is for fabric. And you can see that there is a finishing stitch or a satin stitch that's going around it. So this is just a scan and cut file but now it is an applique and embroidery file. And honestly, Angel, that it really blows my mind that it's this easy that we can do this. So let me show you how I'm going to take this. I'm going to go, I'm oh, sorry. I'm going to go back just to what it, the normal size. So this is what something you could stitch out if you didn't want both pieces to be an applique. All right, let's go to what we do after we send this back from the scan and cut. How do we find it? Where did it go? So we're going to go to my design center, and this is where all of your scan and cut uh, files will go. You are looking for the shapes. So the square and the circle, and I push the shape button. Now, this is where there's something new up in this right hand corner. There is a little icon that looks like an, a scan and cut, right? So they, they try to make this easy. So I'm going to press the scan and cut and give it a minute to process. Now, you'll be able to see, I have been doing this a lot. This can hold 20 designs at once. Here's just a bunch of different files that I've brought over from the scan and cut. There's a baby bib. Here's a quilt block, scissors. Um, these are just scan and cut shapes. Here's the one we did. The newest one is always in the top left corner. And so I'm just going to press OK. And it's going to show up on my screen. And I'm just going to make it bigger because... I want you to be able to see everything. So here's the cone and here's the top. That's all. Now we're ready. It's not digitized yet. It's not a design. If you are familiar with my design center, here's where you can go crazy. You can add background fills and lines and, and uh, but we're just going to keep it simple. We're going to start at the beginning. Now I need to separate these because I can't do something I want to be able to make this one color and I want to make this a different color, but right now they're connected. So what you have in the luminaire is a little box down here at the bottom and it's called the select tool. And I'm going to point to it right here. And it looks like a dashed line that goes around the square. So let me press that. Now there, in my case, because I have a luminaire two, I have five different options. If you have a luminaire one, then you will have a couple less. Doesn't matter, you can make this work. I'm going to use this one that looks like the stylus. I'm gonna press it and let me move over so you can see. I want to work on one thing at a time. So I'm gonna press this and I'm gonna press the uh, ice cream. And now that has been highlighted. I'm going to press the cut button and it's no longer on the screen. I am just working with my ice cream cone base. Perfect. Here's where we're going to take it over to the new stuff. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to turn off. I'm going to press the line design at the top and I'm going to turn it to no sew on the line. We have outlines in my connection, so I don't need the outlines here. So I turn that off. 
Next thing, I'm going to go to the fill buttons and I'm just going to make this brown like an ice cream cone and push the fill and touch the center of the ice cream cone. That's it. Now it's ready to become an applique. So let me press next. You can see that it's digitized here. Let me make it bigger so you can see that. So there's all the lines. Now it's ready to be stitched out. We'll press set and OK. And here it is. Now we have it in our embroidery screen. So what are we going to do to turn this into an applique? Here's where the secret lies. Do you see the patch button? If I press the patch button, there are now two options. This is the one that I've always had where I could put um, an applique around the entire thing. Let me show you what it does. See how it made an applique around it? That's fine, but that's not exactly what we're going for here. Let me press applique patch for selected colors. Pressing the beige and pressing next. Now here's where we get an entire screen of new options. What do I want my finishing stitch to be? Do I want it to be a light zigzag? If so, I can take a look at that. Do I want it to be a satin stitch? That's another option. And off will just make a line around the outside. It does not tack your fabric down. We're going to do a satin stitch. We're going to go to preview next. And this is just letting me see that it has added a placement stitch, a tack down and a finishing stitch. And it's turned off the embroidery stitch, the fill stitch. Say okay. And here it is. Mm, sorry, I got that on. Here it is. So here is our uh, newly digitized um, fill or applique for an ice cream cone. So pretty cool. I mean, that's all we had to do. Now you be, may be wondering, why didn't I bring it in together with the other one? Well, that's because I want to be able to move them around independently. If I'd brought the two together, then I would have been stuck. They would have been stuck as one item. One more thing. Let's bring over the ice cream cone top. So I'm going to press add in the bottom left corner, go back to my design center. And then this is just a good review for how to find these designs. We'll go back to the shapes button. Then we'll go up to the scan and cut in the top right corner. It's going to again, look for the design. Now it's here. It is. It's always defaulting to the one in the top left. Press OK. This time, let me use the other select tool. So if you're someone who doesn't have one of these, use the square. And the square will let me draw around the one I do not want. So I'm just going to press that and then press the scissors button and it's gone. So just a repeat of what we did before, go back to the line design at the top right, press no sew and okay and touch the outline. And then we'll just fill it in, press the fill button. That's it. We're ready to take it out. So a couple more set, just press set and okay. Here's our ice cream cone. Now notice what you could do here. You might just want the cone to be an applique and you might want the ice cream to be a fill. That is 100% an option. You or you may still want this just like we've been doing to be your fill or sorry to be an applique. So we'll do that now. Should I keep going, Angela, or anything we should stop and answer? No, this is great. Uh, we'll we'll stop when you're finished. But uh, so far, everybody's just saying very cool, and there's a lot of designs in here. So <laughs> oh boy, no kidding. Okay, so I now have two pieces. Again, the reason I did this one at a time was because I wanted the flexibility to figure out where I'm putting my pieces. So I'm going to press the one we're turning into an applique. I'm going to press edit and the patch button again. Applique patch for selected colors, pressing the blue and next. We're going to go ahead and stay with the satin stitch. I like the way that looks and preview it. That's looking good. Pressing next. 
And you can see, I know this is a little hard on the screen, but you would be able to see up close, this blue has been turned off. And now I have my three pieces, placement, tack down, applique, press OK. And there we go. They're both an applique. And I'm free to put them where I want. Now I could put them side by side if I want to see both satin stitches stitched out. You know, if I want to have my cone there, I can press that. But what I like and I've been doing is I've been overlapping a little bit. And then I'll show you how I handle that overlap when we do it. But that's it. We are now ready to uh, cut this out in the scan and cut and, and stitch it out on our towel. Very easy. Very easy to follow. And by the way, while you're uh, going to go to the scan and cut, I just want to point out that for all of you watching, if you're watching on Facebook, if you share this to your page, it's easier to go back and watch so you can follow all the way through. If you're on Facebook, you can save it into watch later file or like it. And then you can go back to Brother Sews and watch these. So I always like to say that because, you know, I don't know about you, but Heather, but I like to watch all the way through and then go do it myself as I follow. Absolutely. Right. Because I, I want to understand why. <laughs> why are we doing this? Where is this going? And then I can do follow along later. So I'm totally in agreement, Angela. Perfect. OK, so we have an applique here. And let me show you, because I think with some color, it becomes a little bit more obvious that we we have two separate appliques uh, that we are working with. So now you can see that I do not, I'm not required to use the same colors at all. I will be able to use two totally different applique colors. So, all right, how do we get this file that I have created over to the scanning cut so that I can now cut out our pieces? I could use the original design that we pulled up, but I'm going to recommend that you wait and you use this file because of any changes that can have occurred during the, this translation using my connection. So right down here says memory. New icon in the right hand corner looks just like the scan and cut screen with a little wireless circle coming out of the side. I'm gonna press that button and there you go. If I press transfer, do you wish to replace the existing data with new data? Yes, I do. Press transfer and it is headed over to the scanning cut so you can see where oops sorry the um having wireless is so important without wireless we cannot do this it would not be so fast all right here i am at the scanning cut this is the file we already sent that's not what i want i'm going to go into and notice i cannot cut so this would not work for me to cut these out i'm going to press the home button and go back to the main screen. I'm gonna press the left and we're going back to my connection. This time I'm going to press retrieve before we sent. Now I'm retrieving. We're using the wireless device. Give it a moment and it will pop right up here. Here's the design I made. I'm going to press the applique key. Oh, now that's interesting. I don't see my bottom, but it's reading my one that I sent earlier. Okay, we're gonna pull up the top and we're gonna press set. And we are going to, there's our ice cream top. Now I'm gonna go back and look at my memory button because I anticipated that I should have seen both. And it looks like it's reading the one that I sent earlier. So I'm gonna go ahead and go pack. This is a good review. Go back to my connection and retrieve and wireless device and that looks like so do you see that it's showing the stitches for both let's go back into the flower because your scanning cut can read both um, the PES and the my connection version so here is another way of coming at this. So here are the stitches that you would normally see. So the placement stitch, tack down the finishing stitches. But all I'm looking for are the basically the placement stitches so that it will tell us exactly what we need to cut. 
So I'm going to get rid of the ones that you see at the bottom very quickly. We'll throw those away. And these are my two pieces that have come over. Now, I'm going to go back to my colors because I'm wondering if I, really quick, give me one sec. I'm looking at my luminaire. Yes. So what I did, <laughs> when I changed this to a color, I changed the fact that it was an applique. So let me show you that because that was really on me, guys. Sorry about that. <laughs> Where did it go? I, I uh, see a couple of you asking about other machines for the My Connection and other brands. This is exclusive to Brother and also right now it's exclusive for the Luminaire. So I hope that helps a lot of those questions rolling around there. All right, keep going, Heather. Okay, so this is actually a really good learning opportunity because if this happens to you, you won't be confused. Um, when I came back over here a minute ago, I was saying to you guys, let me change the colors so that you can see that there are two different things going on here. Well, what happened was without really looking at what I pressed, I pressed applique material and I changed it to a regular stitch. So it no longer knew that I wanted the cone to be an applique. And that was just an easy thing to do without thinking about it. So I'm going to go back to Brothers Embroidery. I'm going to scroll down to where the scissors, these are going to be teeny tiny on your screen, but there's a little scissors button. And when I press it where it says toasty red, it's going to go back to applique material. So now I have the cone has applique and the ice cream cone has applique. So I apologize for that um, confusion. In the blink of picking a color, I just turned it right on off. So let's say, okay, one more time memory, scan and cut. And now let's go look and we should see a cone and we should see a, an ice cream, right, Angela? What can I say? Oops, wrong, wrong one. There we go. All right, let's go back to my connection and retrieve from the wireless device. Let's see if we get two this time. All right, gonna press this. Ah, there it is. Now did I change it to, <laughs> I changed it to an applique, that's okay. So we're gonna go ahead and um, you put both of them on the, on the mat. So here we go. I'm gonna set them down. Here's my ice cream. Now I had changed this to an applique, so you're seeing stitches. It's, it's completely fine, it'll stitch no problem. So let me uh, press, okay. All right, so let's get our fabric on the mat. For that, I'm gonna go to the overhead again. Now I'm gonna be using the standard mat. We have a couple choices. We could also be using the fabric mat but I'm gonna use the standard mat. The reason is, is the fabric that I will be using has a backing on it. So I've ironed on a fabric applique, con or sorry, a Brothers Fabric Applique Contact Sheet. I love the Brother Fusible. That's what this is, a double-sided paper covered fusible. I've ironed it onto the paper and because I'm using a fusible, I don't want to use my fabric mat. Save your fabric mat for just fabric only. So I'm going to go ahead and lift this up and then I'm going to peel away the paper backing. Now I'm going to place the shiny side or fusible straight down, doesn't really matter where, onto my mat. You want to test this if you're not using Brother Fusible. I know that it's possible for the fusible to come off, but Brother is makes a wonderful fusible that makes this just perfect. And I don't have to worry about the fusible getting left on the mat. And I don't have to worry about my fabric moving around. Now you could have, there's many different blades that come with your scan and cut, vinyl blade, fabric blade. We're not gonna use either of those. The fabric blade I would use with the uh, fabric mat. So I'm gonna set those aside. I also have a rotary blade and the standard blade. Either of these would work fine with fabric. The standard blade will cut a little bit faster because it doesn't have to adjust the blade. We're just gonna go ahead and use that, especially because everyone gets the standard blade with their machine. All right, I'm gonna head over and I'm gonna put this into the scan and cut. 
Now, really briefly, I know you are not seeing that, but I am loading it in. And I am also going to take you back here. All right, so we're back here. I have loaded my blade and my fabric, and we're going to get ready to cut. All right, I do not want my um, cone to cut out the also cut out the stitches. So we're going to head back to the luminaire one more time. Boy, changing that color really kind of kind of messed this up for me, but that's okay. We got this fixed. All right, so I'm going to come back here to applique material and applique position. I'm going to go ahead and take these both back to applique and double check that I have them both turned off. All right, sending, sending this back one more time and let's watch that. Oops, let me come back to scan and cut. All right, back to our home screen and we're gonna press my connection, retrieve, wireless LAN, And we're gonna come back here. Okay, now we got it. So here is just our outline stitch for both of those. So I'm gonna place it on the mat, press set, and then I'm going to add our ice cream cone and press set, and we are ready to cut. Now I know many of you have seen me, us use a scan and cut before. We're just gonna press the background scan. So I'll press start and let that scan in. And then I will hold this up so you can see. I'll put it under the um, table so you can see how this is working. Any questions, Angela, while we start to um, go in and cut this? There are a couple questions. So first of all, I see quite a few of you asking again, I, some of you maybe rolled in later, about what scan and cut you can use. SDX 325 and SDX 330D work with my connection. So just so you know. And then I see a few other questions, but I'll let you keep rolling here and I'll wait till you take a break. How's that? Got it. Sounds perfect. Okay. So all I did there, this is my background scan and with a scan and cut. Now you can do this with any scan and cut. This is not limited to just these two. You will be able to scan in whatever fabric is on your mat and then move your designs directly over your material. This is such a saving uh, for saving materials. I mean, you can use small pieces, scraps, you can fit exactly what you need on the mat and then position your design directly over it. So now I can see that everything is going to cut beautifully. I don't, everything is in its place. If I press okay, then if I press please select, then I have some different options. We are just doing the cut option. Now I'm gonna press start to begin cutting and then show you how it's cut. And that will let me answer a question that I saw, Angela, in the, um, let me press start, in the comments. And someone had said, let me move over to the overhead. Someone said, is there a way to remove the overlap uh, when you have those two pieces? And that's an excellent question. So let me show you a couple things that I have here. We have three identical ice cream cones. Here is what it would look like. This is actually just the fill stitch. There's no applique here. So if you wanted to do part applique, part fill, you can see what that looks like. Here is what my connection does for you. It does a light zigzag, and then it does a finishing satin stitch around the whole thing. So that's what we can expect. Here's an example of me stitching it out where I did nothing about the overlap. So that this entire satin stitch is underneath this fabric. And I have to say, and I, I was running some tests with this, I don't see this as a problem. I ironed this over and this looks really good to me. However, I understand wanting to get rid of the overlap. So my suggestion would be to this, I'm gonna peel this back, is when you are stitching your pieces underneath, start and stop your stitches at the beginning. So I stopped my satin stitch from here to here, and then I let my satin stitch continue, 
And when I came around to the other side, I pressed my start button so that my stitches went very slowly and I came up to the applique line and stopped again. And now I have no thick overlap underneath when I go to stitch this down. So that would be a little bit of my trick, I guess, for how you could avoid having thick stitches underneath your applique. That was All great, right. Heather, because actually Vicki asked that and a few other people said, I'd like to know too. So right yeah. up the alley. Thank you. Completely understand. That's a good question when we're using more than one. All right, here we go. So let's take our applique pieces off. This is always my favorite part because it's just fun. It's like getting to play. And then I'm missing my spatula, but I can use my weeding tool. So then I'm going to just place un something underneath to lift this up. And here we go. So you can see that the, the uh, adhesive did not stick to the mat and it did not come off and it doesn't fray. So this would be the benefit of using the adhesive is the lack of fraying on your fabric when you're using the cutting machine. And uh, there we go. Here's this one. These are all ready to go onto the towel and be stitched down. So let's do that next. Unless there are any questions about scan and cut stuff. I think we're about 21 feet. I know there's a 20 second delay, but by the way, all of our dear friends on YouTube, I did delete the troll, but don't click on the link in case it pops up again, just so you know. <laughs> they, they must be so interested in your ice cream cone. They just can't stand it, Heather. Oh, what can I say, right? Oh my gosh. All right. Thanks <laughs> for taking care of that though, Angela. Appreciate it. All right. I'm heading over to the Luminaire so that I can show you putting this into the machine. All right, here we are. All right, so I have a large towel, guys. Like I have all this stuff back here. So I'm just going to very gently pull it out. And it's just a slow process of tucking it underneath my uh, embroidery foot. So I'm gonna come this way. Sorry, I'm a little bit in the way, but I'll get out of the way. Here we go. I got that wrong. Okay. Let me move over. Oh, let me move my camera. There we go. So now that you can see that I have my arm right here, I have a lot of embroidery fabric over there. I have a towel. I'm going to gently push it under and slide that in and press that down. So I could have done this either way. I could have done it so the bulk was on this side of the arm it with the bulk on this side either way it's going to work either way you're still going to have the bulk the main goal is that you don't have any of this fabric and anyone who's been doing this a while knows you don't want any of this fabric under the hoop so i'm just doing a quick sweep and coming around and making sure okay this is all flat there's no fabric underneath looks like we're ready to go perfect so i'm going to go ahead and go back to the screen so you can see how we're going to do placement because really that's the last thing we have to do before we start stitching. Oops, going to get you there. All right, here we are at the screen. <clears throat> so I can see that I have a little bit of glare. We're ready to embroider, so I'll go ahead and press embroider. Now I'm going to go ahead and use the uh, projector first out of the gate to see where I want to place this. I'm going to press projector and then I'll take you back over to the fabric so you can see where that is going to be placed. I know we've shown the projector a lot, but just in case you haven't seen it before, you move the projector by touching the screen and dragging it around. And then this box is what you will see on your fabric. So let me come closer so you can see what that looks like here. So can you see my ice cream cone being projected? Absolutely. It looks great. Okay. I know. I think it does too. So I want to move it onto this blue line. So let me go ahead. And I know you can't see me moving the screen, but I am going to press the down arrow until I get this uh, sitting on top of my blue line. Every time you see the blue circles, that just means it's moving around and adjusting almost there. I went a little bit farther than I need to. 
And I'm just wondering, yeah, I have that right sitting right on top. Okay, so let me get closer so you can see. <clears throat> Oops, that would not be closer. Okay, that is exactly where I want it. This is the projected outline of my embroidery design. It is now sitting right at the center of those crosshairs and we are ready to stitch. All right, I'm ready to start. I'm gonna leave it there and I'm going to do the placement stitch so you can watch that happen. It's so quiet, Heather. It really is, Angela. I agree. It really I is. Always, I'm always amazed during the videos when the luminaire is embroidering or sewing or anything. Your camera's <laughs> right there. <laughs> it, it, I know. It, uh, my mic is right next to the machine. Now I'm lifting this out because I'm going to go to the next step where we're going to place. And I'll, because I have to do this on camera, I need to move it farther than I would be willing to move it if this was just me doing it at home, but I want you to be able to see the process. So I'm going to take it over to the table and I'm going to put a pad underneath it. So here I am back at the table. Now we are ready to put our first applique piece on. I'm going to put a wool pad underneath. I just need something. It can be what a towel, it can be whatever you want to use while you iron. Here's my piece, and I'm, it's going to fit perfectly into that position. So I'm just going to lay it into place. I mean, obviously, we can see right away the benefits of this, that you do not have to cut the excess fabric away. So I'm going to use a small iron that fits in the hoop. Any iron, I actually think my larger iron would have worked. Anything that will do, do a nice job sticking this down into its place. And then we're going to go back and we're going to do the finishing stitch for this. And I'll show, let me hold up again the pieces for those folks, because I know there were those questions about avoiding the extra, extra underneath. So basically what we're doing is we're mimicking what I have here. So we're going to do the light zigzag around the entire design. And then we will do, we will start and stop in about the, the place we need. But in order to do that, I got to know where my next piece is. So first thing when we go back to the machine is I'm going to do the placement stitch for the ice cream cone. And then we will stitch down the ice cream. So back to the luminaire. And you can watch me wrangle my large, very large towel. Okay, so here we go back to the table and I'm gonna push this back. Make sure I go under the foot. The only real obstacle I have here is the foot. So if, as long as I'm paying attention and watching the foot, I am good to go. And here we are on the side and I'm gonna slide this in lock that into place and i don't see any extra fabric underneath so we look good to go all right before i do any finishing stitch i'm going to advance my screen to the placement stitch for the ice cream cone i want to see where those stitches are going to be so let's do that placement stitch so with applique, if you haven't done it before, there's always three stitches. There's the placement stitch, which is what we're seeing right now. There's a tack down stitch to hold your fabric down. <coughs> Excuse me. And then there is a finishing stitch. And that finishing stitch is our zigzag in this case. All right. Now what you're not seeing on the screen is me just moving back and forth to these stitches. Now I'm going to move this a little closer so that you guys can see how I'm going to make this change, how I'm gonna start and stop. Okay. So the very first stitch that's going to happen is just the basic zigzag. 
And I'm going to let that go through the entire thing because it's so thin. It's just a really nice stitch to hold the entire piece down and it doesn't create any bulk. So notice how fast it's going to happen and it's just very, very thin. So for me, there's not a concern that this is going to be bulky underneath. You know, Heather, I was just, as I'm looking at that, and a lot of the projects we've been doing lately on Brother, if you were to go purchase this and have it monogrammed, a towel and have it monogrammed and applique, can you imagine what you'd pay for that? Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Thank you. I mean, that's that's a good point. I mean, we're doing some really fun things that are maybe a little bit more of a, you know, less, not so much beginner level, but that you would have to pay someone a lot. And it's not that hard to learn how to do. Exactly. All right. I have zigzagged this. I'm going to trim the stitch. Now, what's probably a little hard for you to see, maybe not, is that my, um, I have a start point of about right here because this is where my overlap starts. So I'm simply going to come from here to here with, by advancing my stitches and advancing my stitches is just where, and I, I'll let you see the screen except it's got a big glare on it, so that's not going to work. I'm going to let you see the screen, how I advance through this. So see how I can actually watch this right here as it advances. So let me move. Okay. So it looks to me like I am pretty much past the overlap almost let me go a little farther okay that looks to me like i'm just now past the overlap so we're going to go ahead and we're going to continue stitching pull that back is that just uh heather is that just cotton fabric that you have there you know it looks like leather but i think it's just ah it's yes you know what it is just cotton Wow. There isn't anything special about it, just cotton with a backing. Although I think this would look really cute with leather. I do too. Actually, I, I looked, I was like, I could have sworn it was cotton. <laughs> <It's good looking. laughs> I think this is What's recorded that? and you're on Facebook. So if you click share, share it to your page and you'll be able to go back and watch it as many times as you like or hop over to the Brother Sews or Crafting YouTube page. So great question. Definitely. All right, I'm going to show you something that I think is really great about this stitch, and that is that it does a great job overlapping. Sorry about the, the blurry. Let me back up. I see somebody asking again about the trolls. Well, actually, I've deleted them five times. I think they're coming from different websites, so I apologize for their lewd comments. I'm deleting them as they come, but uh, somebody's really bored today. <laughs> oh, boy. Not exciting. Here, let me see if I can show you here. So let me lift the presser foot. Now, sometimes people will ask me, um, why am I not making this? Um, why did I not make my fabric bigger so that it would get caught in the stitches? Well, the thing about my connection is that it does such a great job covering the entire, uh, trying to come over here, covering the entire edge. So this is covering, it's not going from the middle, it's going from the edge of the ice cream over 0.140 uh, millimeters like we, or inches. So this is a huge amount of coverage. I did not need to cut the ice cream cone any larger. Um, not with my connection. There are other programs where I would recommend that, but that wasn't recommended here. So that is another really great benefit of my connection. Let me just get that started again. All right, I'm just, now I'm getting up to the other side and I'm going to be paying attention. And when I get close, I'll be pressing the button on my machine to slow me down so I know exactly where to stop. Oops. And if, this is actually very quiet as well. It's surprisingly quiet. I love watching that. Hey, Julia has a question for you, which is kind of interesting. Uh, she says, Heather, could you, by any chance, 
have uh, just taken your hoop and put it in through the back? Is there an easier way? And I think Julia, uh, she already, or is that Julie? Julia, <laughs> she already mentioned that she was doing it this way because of the cameras. So you, whichever yes. way is less bulky, just make it work. For sure, guys. Sorry, because I want you to be able to see the cameras. Um, sometimes it's not the most graceful. Uh, okay, <laughs> did you see that I was slowing that down back and forth? So basically what it is, is I have now brought my stitches right up to the placement line of my ice cream cone top. So I'm done. I'm not going to keep stitching. If I did, all of this would have the satin stitch bulk. And there's just no need. You'll never see it. It's all going to be covered by the, sat the ice cream cone and we don't want the bulk. So I'm going to tie off my stitch, which you can do by the, with the luminaire by pressing down the um, reinforcement stitch. Press my scissors to cut. All right, let me pull that out because what we're left to do at this point is now sew down the top of the ice cream. That's it. So I need to grab that from the table and I'll show you exactly how we'll put that on and I'll show you my special stitches now that we've created them. So today, Angela, really, we were trying to help make, we're doing a little bit more of an advanced lesson maybe, still a lesson for everyone because there's good tips in here. But um, definitely some extra stuff you might not have gotten other places. So here we go. Now, can you see, Angela, that I have stopped my satin stitches here and here? Absolutely. We can see that great. Okay. This was just a matter of moving myself down. I don't know how many stitches it was to the new starting point. And this was just stopping it early. And now I don't have any of the bulk underneath. It's really not, not a fancy technique and it works really well. Here's our ice cream cone, and we will place it down over our placement stitches so I know exactly where to put it. Come in here and, <clears throat> excuse me, do a little pressing. And the last thing to do will be our finishing stitch, and we'll be done. There won't be any overlap between those two. And I have perfectly cut fabric. There's no need to come in here with scissors and trim. It's just a really fun, easy technique. And with more than 1,300 designs built into your, <clears throat> your scan and cut, not to mention how many thousands or over 1,000 designs that you have on your Luminaire, these are all available to you to convert into embroidery designs. And that is one of the reasons that I love my connection because you have so many opportunities to get creative with the, the free, basically free designs to you because you already own the machine that are available. Which is awesome. And so I see some of you still have a few questions about technicalities of different machines. Be sure to call your brother dealer. They can give you details. And again, this my connection is between the Luminaire and two scan and cut models, the SDX325 and the SDX330D. I had to write them down, make sure, because sometimes I, I'll think it's with something else and it's not. So I just wanted to confirm that. <laughs> and yes, I think, uh, hey, Melba, I saw your comment too. So there's definitely a troll on YouTube. And if they're sending you private messages, please uh, do not click on their links. And uh, I'm deleting them as fast as I can, but I can't prevent them from giving you private messages. So just ignore them. And if you can block them, feel free. Perfect. All right. Heather, your ice cream cone is very popular today. <laughs> it's such a fun design. Okay. We are in the machine. We have the pink. I'm just going to go ahead and start stitching the top. Um, and then I'm going to come in here closer for you to see a little bit. But really, that was it. Um, if I can offer... Oops. Sorry. I was standing. Oh, I didn't thread my needle. Threading your needle. That would be, that'd be a good one. All right, I, I went to the trouble of putting it in the threading mechanism. Let's go ahead and thread it. All right, there we go. So with my connection, again, I don't think it is in any way necessary for you to make your scan and cut pieces larger. It does a really great job getting right to the edge of the fabric. And this is just the light zigzag that my connection does. And then after the, the light zigzag, it will do the satin stitch. And it's hitting the edges of the applique. There's no excess fabric. You don't need to come back later with scissors and trim. And I'm going to let it 
start there and you can see it's going and it is well, regulating speed. Go ahead, Angela, well, sorry. Uh, Heather, just a couple of questions for you. This is uh, off topic a little bit, but it's still worth answering. So Jane just has a question. How do I find if there are updates for my machine? Now, for all of you watching, many of you asked about upgrades and updates. Updates are free, upgrades are not. So your machine will show you if it has an update, depending on what machine you have. So Heather, why don't you share how easy it is on the Luminaire to know when there's an update? Oh boy, that's super easy. All it, You'll turn your machine on and there will be a little exclamation point next to the Wi-Fi button letting you know that it's ready to be updated. Um, and it does it wirelessly on its own. So it's super fast and easy. Everyone's saying, what flavor is that ice cream? I'd have to go for mint chocolate chip, but it's pink. I don't think that's going to work. <laughs> I'm with I you, Clover. Bubble gum. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Uh, we just had family week last week at my house, and uh, they call win Uncle Buck. And Uncle Buck's only job was to pick up ice cream. And I believe we went through five or six gallons of cookies and cream and mint chocolate chip and you name it. This towel would have been perfect. Oh, Definitely. I'm thinking I need like a banner with ice cream cones. Yes. When Oh, Melva says, I'm, glad I'm not the only one that forgets to uh, thread the machine. No, we're with you, Melva. You, Melva. <laughs> no, but, but Melva, just keep in mind, at least hundreds of people aren't watching you when you forget. <laughs> <laughs> Although, oh, Marjorie, I just saw Marjorie say, can you show us where to locate this font? Yes. As soon as this stops stitching, let me show you. Great question because I think this is a, I mean, this is a fabulous font and it's built right into the machine and it's huge. So it anything, is. whether it's monogramming names or, you know, initials, whatever. Ah, strawberry <laughs> with marshmallows. Yeah. I Strawberry with chocolate <laughs> chips. There you go, Joanne. I like those. With chocolate chips. <laughs> Perfect. Um, the Luminaire 2, can you go back and forth on the thumb drive? Sure. You can, but you cannot use this particular technique, Julia, you won't see the My Connection applique button if you don't have My Connection. So you could definitely take a design out of your machine and open it up in your scan and cut and cut the files. You can do that. It's just not a transition into an embroidery design from your scan and cut. Definitely. Okay, let me show you this and then we'll look at the font. Sounds good. And Melba, new products that Brother carries. Typically, new products come out in uh, August. That's usually right. not all of them, but typically you always hear about Brother's B2B event, which uh, we'll be live streaming from there this year, which will be very exciting, uh, the first week of August. And that's when they usually announce the new products for the year. So I had a lot of people asking about that. <laughs> oh, good question, right? Very exciting. Yeah. Okay. So here we go. Now you can see that we have our other, that kind of looks like a cupcake in some ways, other ice cream cone so that I have it all the way across my towel. I'm trying to get my arm out of the way, but I have two on either side. It's just, it's a huge design here, so it's fun. But I just love this. I love this. I love that this was in the scan and cut and I created my own applique. I made it up. I decided what it would look like and how it would finish. And to me, that's just the ultimate creative that we have here with Brother. Awesome. Absolutely beautiful. I All know right. since August is almost here. I think the B2B is the first week of August. So uh, you'll have to stay tuned for all the live events coming from there. Definitely. All right. I'm going to move my lights so that you're not seeing that. And I want to show you where that font is. Move this out of the way. Okay, this font is, oh boy, still having issues with that. Oh, we lost you. You did. You, <laughs> you didn't lose me. You lost uh, the camera. Hold on. <laughs> hey, Kelly, I see that. Uh, will we know about products and shipping and all that? I'm not sure, but when we're at B2B, we can find out. Last year was a whole different deal. <laughs> That was the end of the COVID area. So we lost Heather when she gets back here. Here she is. I think okay. she's back. I'm back. Here you are. It's very easy to push a button and then be sorry. Okay. Press OK. Let me show you this font. If you go to the home screen and you go into embroidery, 
it's in category three where they have the green, the, the large letters. And if you scroll over to category seven, this is where that font is located. And it has uppercase, lowercase numbers, and all kinds of extras and punctuation. This is a fabulous font. And what I did was I used the uppercase S and then um, set it. And I wanted to be able to move all of my letters individually. So I set them individually because in the end, I realized my summer for the S needed to be slightly smaller. So if I had put all the letters together at once, it would have resized the entire design and I didn't want that. So then I would just go back to add and I added my, uh, my letters one at a time, but you don't have to. This was just the way I decided to do it so that, like I said, I could make my changes myself. And because it's this cursive look, let me add the M, you can see that it really does look like without any digitizing on your part, just using what's built into the machine it really does look like cursive. Wow. I love that font. I haven't used that one yet and I don't know why, but it's huge and it looks great. It does. It's a fabulous font. I really like it. And you can definitely resize it, move things around. You know, if, if you left that open, you could do that. But by overlapping the letters, it really does look like, you know, some, some cursives go in there. Very, very cute. So you all saw where that font was on the luminaire. Yes, yes. <laughs> Category three. It was there. Okay. Did I miss anything? You did not, but while you are coming back to us, I want to just point out that down below, if you look at the scrolling, brotherso's.com. What day is it? It's July, I don't know, after the 4th, <laughs> July 5th. And so I'm sure the free design of the month, I didn't double check before I came on here, but if everything was on calendar right, uh, the free design of the month should be up on ibroider.com. You want to check that out. I know the website's going to be down for a few weeks while they're working on something new. So if it's not there, don't panic, but don't forget to download that. Hope to see from Joanne what that is. And Heather, a lot of people saying thank you. This is adorable, easy project, easy project. Uh, what does B2B stand for? Back to business. Back to business. Ah. With brother. I agree. Thanks, Robin. And again, for all of you on YouTube, sorry about the trolls that we've had. We've had multiple. Many people are interested in ice cream. I think they were interested in something else, though. <laughs> but we were able to delete them. But also, if you look down below, I put uh, where you can find Heather on Instagram. She has some great photos on there. If you have questions about what happened here, feel free to reach out to her. And I also put my website. And then you have Brother Sews. So awesome. Thank you, everyone. And, and stitch out your own towel, regardless of whether you use my connection or what you're doing. Um, you can definitely make something really cute like this, too, with your brother machine. So cute. OK, uh, Joanne says nautical design is what it is, and it's available for download. Thanks, Joanne. Go to ibroidery.com, or you can go to Brother Sews. And don't forget to check out the blog. Everybody's saying thank you, thank you. Keep your questions rolling in because the Brother Social team can answer those if we missed them. Heather, this was an awesome project, perfect timing for summer. But not only that, whenever I see something like this, I think if I would get on my gifts for the holiday season early, this would make a great gift. It's a good point, right? I mean, I need that incentive too because doing my gifts early like this would make such a difference. Oh, I know. I've got a few birthdays coming up. My sisters just had birthdays yes, last week. They would have loved this. But weddings, you name it, this, there's a lot of possibility. Ice cream cone or not? I love, the, I love the big lettering. Me too. Me too. It's so fancy. All right. So all of you watching, be sure to like and follow Brother on Facebook and YouTube. Uh, let's see. We will be back here on Thursday at uh, noon. I believe it's Sarah is going to be showing. Okay. So, Heather, you shared with For the Beach, right? Yes. Thursday, Sarah's, her theme is grilling. So, anything grilling. We've got aprons. We've got uh, hot pads. We've got everything you need that's going to have some beautiful monograms and other things on it, too. So, a lot more for our summer season. Thanks, brother, for all the inspiration and the brother educators. Thank Fantastic. you. All right, everyone. Heather? Nice to see you. I look forward to seeing what you're putting on Instagram. Until then, everyone, happy sewing. Bye, everyone. I'm afraid I have a confession to make. I'm actually here undercover. <gasps> March, now. <gasps> I can't.
came to Quilt Club to gain the knowledge and insight to help build the best collection of quilting machines brothers made. Oh. I'm sorry I couldn't tell you I was undercover. Can you find it in your hearts to forgive me? Let's quilt. Yeah.